Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to return to the Tinkerboard, a new single board computer that was first launched by ASUS in February 2017, which is now becoming more widely available. Over the past few months we've had several software updates of the Tinkerboard, and so in this video I'm going to look specifically at video playback on the board, both locally in its native media player and in Kodi, and also on YouTube, and I'm also going to run some CPU temperature tests. Right, here we are on the desktop of Tinker OS 1.8, which was released on the 18th of April 2017. So I thought the first thing we'd do with this is to show you some video playback. And so I'll just bring up a folder here with some video files in. These files contain exactly the same footage, but at different resolutions, 720p, uh, 1080p and 2160p. So I'll first of all try and play the 720p clip and I've set this to play in the default media player which is the Rockchip media player which has been developed in a conjunction apparently with ASUS for the Tinkerboard and it's now integrated into the system. It came into the operating system in version 1.6 but it wasn't really linked in very well but now you'll find if you look at the menu under sound and video the media player there is this media player. So if I just click on the full screen and play it will play our footage, and as you can see, this is playing absolutely fine. There's no problems at all playing a 720p footage on the Tinkerboard. No issues with blocking or things not working. You can see from the time code, it works fine. Having said that, when I press the escape key to stop playing full screen, it does that, which is not absolutely ideal, is it? So there are still things to sort out. It is still in beta OS 1.8 as I show you this. However, you're probably far more interested in can it play 1080p. So let's bring that file up. Same footage, different resolution, full screen and play. And as you can see, that works absolutely fine. Now I should say here I'm recording this video at 720p from the Tinkerboard because the Tinkerboard won't talk to my recording equipment above 720p. But if I cut here to a shot of the same thing recorded by just pointing a camera to monitor at a full 1920-1080 resolution, you can see it works just as well. So we have no problems at all playing 1080p footage on the Tinkerboard, and it doesn't even bring up strange things when we stop it. However, you might remember that the Tinkerboard is supposed to be able to handle 4K footage, or at least 2160p. It's certainly got a GPU that can decode that type of footage. Now there has been a lot of debate about exactly what the Tinkerboard can do. And on the 19th of April, ASUS put out an article on the Tinkerboard and they actually explained this. And as they say, the HDMI port on the Tinkerboard can push, can provide 4K at up to 30 hertz. But it can only do this for full screen video displays because of an issue with the system on a chip. So if you've got 4K being produced by the desktop, it's going to be upscale 1080p. As soon as you go to full screen, you can do potentially 4K. So you're very interested, I'm sure, to know now, can we play this to 160p clip with the customized video player provided for this by ASUS and Rockchip. So uh, let's play that and uh, full screen as before and play. And it looks promising, loading, and then nothing happens and I'm afraid nothing will happen. This will not play that footage at all. We could sit here forever, it's not gonna work. However, as you know, there is a more than one way to uh, cook a cat, as they say, and the other way we could try playing this footage is perhaps with Kodi. So I've installed Kodi on the Tinkerboard here, just as it's going to a terminal, and I did a sudo app get update, sudo app get upgrade, and then I did a sudo app get install Kodi, and that worked absolutely fine. So I can now go here to the menu. You probably saw it earlier if you were being eagle-eyed. I've got Kodi here. Let's play Kodi. Let's bring up Kodi. There we are. And if I go to uh, videos, I can go to uh, files and videos. We're back in exactly the same directory we were before. Let's try the same things. There's our 720p footage. Works fine. That's not a shock for you, is it? Let's just stop that. Oops. Oh dear, I've gone backwards, didn't want to do that. Deary, deary me. You'd think I knew what I was doing, wouldn't you? Never mind. Let's try and do it right this time. Uh, we'll now go to a 1080p. Again, that plays absolutely fine. Again, that's not a surprise. I'll just escape out of that. And then I'll now draw, try and play the 2160p. And yes, this is now playing our 2160p clip. 
Admittedly, again, you're seeing it in the 720p wrapper. I can show you at 19, 20, 10, 8 on the monitor. Works just as well. I haven't got a 4K monitor to try it on, but it does seem there's a good chance you can play 4K from a Tinkerboard, at least in Kodi. So that is a, a good sign. We're clearly making progress with the Tinkerboard since I first showed it you in terms of being able to play back video files. So, I thought the other thing you might want to know about video playback is what happens with YouTube, because hey, we're on YouTube, guys. So here, I've uploaded the same clip again in uh, 1080p to YouTube. And I'm going to flick it to make sure I've got it in the 1080p I have, and I'll play that, and I'll full screen that, and again, um, that plays absolutely fine. So you can do 1080p YouTube playback on this. I won't show you again showing you a monitor, you'll believe me by now, it works absolutely fine. So that's very good. We can play from YouTube in 1080p. And the other thing you might want to know is what happens, let's just stop that, can we do that with Kodi? Now you might wonder why I'm thinking about that, but the last time I tried Kodi on the Tinkerboard with version 1.6 of the operating system, when I clicked on YouTube files, this happened. The whole thing crashed, so it wasn't terribly stable. So I want to show you that Kodi's got better than that. So if I just uh, run up Kodi here, and uh, here it is. And if I go to uh, add-ons, and I've installed the YouTube add-on, nice and simple to do. And uh, if I do a little search, I've just hidden those files temporarily in this, one of my many other little channels. And if we bring that up, hopefully, I've not tried this, please, is it gonna work? Yes, that plays absolutely fine. So we can play 1080p footage from YouTube, either in the Chromium browser or from Kodi. If you're thinking, can we play 2160p footage from YouTube, neither of these, the answer is no, it gets a bit jittery, it doesn't work too well, but at least we have options for playing 1080p from YouTube on both Kodi and Chromium browser. So there we are. We seem to be in a position right now where we can play 2160p in Kodi on the desktop on the Tinkerboard. We can play 1080p on the desktop using the installed media player, the uh, Rockchip media player, and we can play 1080p from YouTube. So clearly things are improving when it comes to video playback on the Tinkerboard. Okay, I thought we'd do some temperature tests, see how warm the Tinkerboard gets both at load and sitting at idle. You can see the board here, it's not in a case, it's just bolted to a small piece of plastic card to keep it sort of protected to a, to a small extent in terms of being plugged in. And this should give optimal results, obviously, in a temperature test. It's got good airflow there to its little heatsink. We can see how it's been doing in terms of running. If we just go into the menu and go to a system tools, run up eight top. This shows us all kinds of information on the uh, processor and the low, what they're doing. Uh, the thing's been running, what, nearly 50 minutes here, obviously doing very little. It's just been sitting here at idle. Unfortunately, there isn't a temperature reading here, but I found that we can get a temperature reading by uh, going into a terminal and running this command here. So if we run that command there, it'll return a number, and we have to divide by a thousand. This tells us it's actually idling at 51.25 degrees centigrade. Probably worth noting it's about 24.7, or it is 24.7 ambient here, but that's still quite a reasonable amount above ambient, just sitting there idling along, doing virtually nothing. There are actually two temperature sensors in the Tinkerboard, um, zone one and zone two. We just have a look at zone two. It's running exactly the same as zone one. There's great debate about what, what exactly these are for. Some people have suggested that one's for the CPU, one's for the GPU, that's possible. It certainly isn't the case we've got a sensor per core, because it's a four core processor, but I'm just gonna use zone one, because let's be honest, they're gonna be pretty close to each other because it's a rather a small package. So we will use that as, as our baseline for temperature. Now, of course, I need to stress the thing out over time. So what I've done, as I've done many times in the past with a Raspberry Pi, is I've written a little script, a little bash script, and this will clear the screen, and it will then run a loop uh, for nine times, roughly loop one to nine, and then it'll actually run the command to get our temperature from the uh, zone one sensor. And it'll run this sysbench command, which will factor prime numbers up to 20,000. And it'll do that with the screen actually with nothing displaying so we can just see our temperatures as they come through. And on the end, we'll take a 10th temperature reading and we'll see what has happened. I know from previous tests, just setting this thing up, I haven't run it fully yet, but I've been running the components. 
it'll take about 100 seconds per step. So this is about, in total, a 15-minute stress test. So this should be a pretty good stress test of the Tinkerball. So we don't need that anymore, that can go away. So uh, let's go here and we just need to type the command to run that, which will be what bash, and it was what temps sh. And if we run that, it'll give us a temperature and then it'll start doing stuff. And if we uh, look here, you'll see the processor cores are now absolutely maxed out. And I will now leave this thing to run, we'll move out of real time and I'll come back to you in 15 minutes to see how the thing has performed. And uh, there we are, our poor little tinkerboard can now take a rest. As you can see, it started off at it's about 50, added 25 degrees to the processor temperature in, in the first roughly 100 seconds, and then got a little bit higher, almost got to 80, and I suppose I, I guess it started to throttle a bit. That would be the most obvious explanation why we had a small drop in temperature, and it stayed between that sort of a 75 and um, almost gets to 80, did that twice, didn't it? But certainly it's running pretty hot. If you got up this morning thinking to yourself, does a tinkerboard stressed out at full load need more cooling than the simple small heatsink on the board? I think we've definitely answered the question. The answer is yes, it definitely needs more. It really needs a fan, I think, on this and, and a much bigger heatsink if you're going to use it at load. And remember, this is not in a case. If I try to uh, touch the heatsink, you'll find that it's, uh, yes, it's pretty hot. Uh, the, the heat is, a lot of heat is, is there. There's that smell of sort of slightly hot electronics in the room now. And I doubt it's actually cooled very much by now, has it? Let's have a little look. If we just uh, flick back to uh, that, it's, um, oh, it's come down to 65. Look, it's hardly, hardly warm at all, that. Anyway, that I think was an interesting test. It's told us quite a bit about how hot a tinkerboard gets. The tinkerboard is a nice piece of hardware, and its software development also now seems to be headed in the right direction. Indeed, it's not that long ago that we had video playback on the Tinkerboard that looked a bit like this, which is not very impressive, as I'm sure you'd agree. But as we've seen, things have improved significantly. We've now got a version of Kodi working fine on the Tinkerboard. And there's even just been a version of Android launched for the Tinkerboard. Too late to include significantly in this video, but here it is. I might look at it further in a future video. But now that's it for this time. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.